Exposed to any passing pilfer. <laughs> Somebody could wreck a lorry in here and pilfer the whole lot. <laughs> Dad! <laughs> That's no good. You can't say anything to him these days. I suppose he's sulking again. Yeah, I'm not wanted. <laughs> I'll be better off out of here. I'll be glad when he's gone. <laughs> well, he might have left a bit of tea on. <laughs> Broken legs. Artificial respiration. Place patient on stomach. Place both hands on the diaphragm. Who the hell's the diaphragm? The diaphragm. Please, make it wake up. Please don't let him snuff it. Oh, this Christ, the inquest. Oh my God, the inquest. Can you think of anything that might have driven him to this extreme act? Was he upset? Yes. What? We had a row, did you? Yes, but we always has rows. What did you say to him? Nothing, nothing. I never said anything to him. Oh, come, come, Mr. Steptoe. You can't expect the court to believe that. What did you say? I don't wake up. <laughs> wake up. Well, you, you should have heard some of the things he said to me. Well, I'm inquiring into his death, not yours. <laughs> you had a quarrel. What did you say? I said, I, I said, you've outlived your usefulness. And, and you're nothing but an old punce. <laughs> I'd be better off without you. I didn't mean it like that. Right? What have I done? I drove him to it. Well, Dad, wake up, please. <laughs> Oh, he's alive. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Dad, it's all right. It's me, Harold. Get off me, Black. You're hurt to be a great Yes, it's all right. Oh, Dad, I'm sorry. Try to forgive me. I'll be a good son to you in future. I promise you, please. Come on, Dad. You're all right now. I know I said it, but why did you have to come and do it? Why, Dad? Why? Why what? Why, stick your head in the gas oven. I see what I was doing. <laughs> no, I'm seeing uh, grease and instinct hasn't been cleaned out for years. Cleaning it out? Yeah, what do you think I was doing? <laughs> you was cleaning the oven out. <laughs> you did. You rotten, sadistic little swine. <laughs> You've done that on purpose. You know I was coming home and you deliberately simulated death in order to make me think you'd done yourself in. Yeah, don't be dark. I've got better things to do than play games with you. What do I want to do myself in for? To make me feel rotten for what I said to you this morning and make a right burke of myself like I did. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Probably put the wind up you, didn't I? Go on, forgive me. I'll be a good son. <laughs> well, it won't happen a second time, I can tell you. If I catch you like that again, I shall stuff your feet in and shut the oven door as well. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have the nerve. You won't come into the kitchen when I'm bawling winkles. I wonder, as a matter of interest, when you come into the kitchen and found me lying there and thought I'd done myself in, I wonder, who were you most sorry for? Me or you? Look, I'm, I'm warning you, I'm not going to put up with this emotional blackmail any longer. You, you, you can cry all too often, you know. What do you mean? I'm saying no more. Just remember the story of the little boy who stuffed his finger up the dike. <laughs> You think about it. That's all. What have you got there? I said, look right. Radiators. Perhaps that's what they are then. Well, are they then? Of course they are. Oh, they're all right. Nice little strap there. 
You ain't getting a good few quid on them. Well, that ain't nothing on them. There's a complete central heating system here. There's six radiators, pipes, furnace, not water tank. Well, you're not going to block them, what are you going to do with them? I'm going to install them. <laughs> so, where? Round the holes. I'm going to encircle him with radiators. <laughs> and the arse, of course, where you found where I installed yeah. them? In our house, central heating. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. I've always wanted to live in a house with central heating. Yeah, I know you have. That's why you're rotten, sonny. Can't wait for you to pop off. Well, I haven't got a good word to say for you. He's paid for these out of his own pocket. In order that you might have a bit of eat in the house during the winter months, in order that your arthritis may have a bit of a chance. Mm -hmm. There's a kind arrow. Come on down. It was very kind of you, Harold. No, I don't mind. Harold, I'm so fucking sorry for what happened. I didn't mean to frighten you. That's all right. <coughs> it's nice to know you was worried about me. Oh, well. I appreciate that. Blood's thicker than water. Uh, I'd like you to know that, in spite of all our little differences, I have nothing but the highest regard for you, both as a son and as a man. Oh. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Get to put them in. Oh, I'll put them in, Dad. I don't want them too expensive. You? Yeah. A great useless article like you. <laughs> you couldn't put them in. You can't knock a nail at a wall. Thank you very much. So much for the profound respect. That soon went for Burton, didn't it? Oh, <laughs> I don't mean you're useless, Daryl, but it's a skilled job. It's a plenty. You ain't a plumber. Well, if I can't connect up a simple plug to a simple radiator, I might as well simply turn it in. Would you excuse me a moment? <laughs> oh, yes. That's a do very nicely under the window. That's where the greatest heat loss occurs, of course. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Now, what I've got to do is measure up the room to find out a cubic capacity in order to work out my BTU. You know what? My BT British Thermal Units. You see, you have to so many BTUs so as to establish a constant heat level. Oh, you've been going into it then? Oh, yes. I called them and got some pamphlets. Hi, it's very simple, Dad. By the end of the week, I'll have this place looking up in gas board advert. That was snow two feet thick outside, and we'll be sitting here in our continental briefs, <laughs> sipping our eyes, frosted double spread export lagers, sweating like pigs. <laughs> I tell you, man, I'll have this house hotter than a Beatles ear hole. <laughs> yes. Central eating, we've added a thousand pounds to the value of this property. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cocky to me. I've seen central eating me time, but never a mess like this. You're only supposed to see the radiators, not the pipes. They're supposed to be under the floorboards. But we haven't got floorboards, have we? <laughs> we've got concrete floor, haven't we? And I'm not digging that up. In any case, we've exposed pipe in the way to the heating service we have, haven't we? It looks horrible. I'm not unaware of the sense of intrusion it brings into the overall decor. But sometimes you must sacrifice your artistic sensitivity for the privilege of not having to stick your feet in the oven before you go out in the morning. <laughs> Look at that. 
What's that doing stuck out there? Well, I've got a smaller one, have I? You can dodge past that, can't you? And what is the matter with you? You, you are looking for snakes, aren't you? <laughs> oh, that's good. Brilliant piece of planning, that. Well, give me that idea. Very novel. I couldn't have thought of that myself. Do that with the other one. Yeah, you're great fun. You've lived all your life in this house and you can't remember which way the door's open. All doors opens inwards. Only cupboard doors opens outwards. This one opens outwards. Well, it shouldn't. Well, it does. Well, it's ridiculous. I've never seen a door that opens outwards, not even on the pictures. <laughs> I mean, when that bloke charges the door with his shoulder, it opens inwards. Because there's the other bloke on the other side of the gun. He's got the guy against the wall. <laughs> I mean, when that copper kicks the door in, it, yeah, it's inwards. Yeah, it's always inwards. Otherwise, he'd break his bleeding leg. <laughs> oh, well, it's no problem. Half inch clearance, I've shot three and a half inches off the bottom of the door and it'll open over top. Oh, brilliant, and we'll have four snine gales hurtling around my legs while I'm cooking. Oh, no, we won't, because any draft coming in under my door has to go over the top of the heated pipe. Now, we'll have warm air entering the room, won't we? <laughs> and warm air rises, doesn't it? It's perfect. A couple of minutes with a saw, we'll have air conditioning as well. <laughs> I think I'll patent that. I bet nobody's ever thought of that. That's where you need it, mate. Up there. Come on, let's do the bedrooms. Now, nah, I'll get it, man, in just to look at what you've done, make sure it's all right. <coughs> you are beginning to annoy me, Father. You're casting aspersions on my ability. I'm not, Harold, really. Oh, yes, you are. You're trying to undermine my confidence, aren't you? It's always been the same ever since I was a kid. I bring my drawings out. I never got a word of praise from you. What would you do? You'd alter them. I've never seen an animal with five legs before. <laughs> She's trying to describe me green. Well, I was only trying to show you the correct way. Well, that's ways of showing people, especially kids. You does it by example, not by humiliating them. That's why I'm the way I am now. I'm sure of myself. <laughs> Look, you're not going to do it with this. This is going to be all my work. But I don't want to hear any more about bringing a man in. Yeah. Up your pipe. <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> I said I was bringing up the pipe. Now, yeah. where do you want your radiator? Under the bed. <laughs> Under the bed? I love hot veg. Well, why stop there? I mean, it's a double bed. Why don't have it with you? Come on, which side do you sleep on? Hey, which side? That's what it says. I'll cut hole in the bed for them. That's what it says. I'm not having a bed in the bed with me. Why not? What's wrong with it? It'd be like having a permanently built in warming bed. It's too dangerous. Yeah, perhaps you're right. You get those scrawny little knees of yours stuck in the gaps of the radio. <laughs> We'd have a very difficult job explaining that away to the fire brigade. <laughs> yeah, look very kinky. <laughs> This is Ella. I've got an idea. Let's do away with the radiators all together. I'll connect up your pipe to your bed, and then you'll have hot water flowing all round you. That's a good idea. Will it work? Of course it won't work, you stupid twigs. Why not? Well, because it's a question of you've got a brass bedstead. Yeah, on the other hand, for the simple reason, you, well, take the rise in the fall. It, when is the pump? <laughs> If I work. <laughs> yeah, let's give it a try. Uh, we take this pipe here, run it straight up the wall, read it across the ceiling, just straight down into here. Yeah, we connect it up to that. Yeah. Right, now, we connect the pipe from there into this. Now, the hot water goes down here, along the bed away, goes up and down, up and down, up and down, goes along the side of the bed, and it comes out here. That's it. We connect up a bit of pipe to this. Now runs it right along the wall. Now it's got to go through my bedroom, round above, here. Pass me the hammer and chisel, would you? <laughs> Oh, pity I've got a wooden bed. Oh, there's lots of brass bedsteads out in the yard. You would have them in the house before you said you wanted a Scandinavian room. Yes, that's true. So I, I could always use one of the smaller radiators and box it in with a little mesh grill. 
I don't think that'll impinge on the overall and beyond. <laughs> did you know that this fall was only half an inch thick? Yes. Then why did you tell me? I forgot. Oh, built years ago, that was. It used to be all one room. Your grandfather did it just after I was born. I was number 10, see? He took one look at me and he said to your grandfather, that's it, all right, no more. Bunged up the partition and they never met again except at dinner time. <laughs> you never knew your grandfather, did you? No. Oh, that's right. He died just after you was born. Work poisoning. God, he couldn't have put the works away. They, uh, they reckon he got his teeth in a bad one. Without one word of a lie, I've seen him coming home from the Skinner's Arms of a Saturday night, pull away ten pints of oaks and a big enamel jug full of bitter, give us all a cat round the ear, all off up to bed. It's a wonder my grandmother didn't put a partition up. <laughs> that didn't stand a chance, women in them days. Now, one word out of place, and she'd get a gas bracket wrapped round her head. <laughs> oh, yes. Many's the night she spent locked in the cowl house, screaming her head off. <laughs> Well, it has to be a spore bed I do come from. Don't you stop getting the shank of your family background. Oh, I'm not, I'm not. But you must admit, it's hardly grass more stuff, is it? <laughs> I can't quite imagine the 14th Earl of Hume's granddad <laughs> locking his old woman up in a coal hole <laughs> and dying of a surfeit of welts. <laughs> they were hard days, they were. That's why people live then. Think it's as lucky you got it so cushy. Oh, I do, I do. Every night before I goes to bed, I have to walk around the yard and the house and I says to myself, Dad, think one day this will all be mine <laughs> well, i have to pinch myself to make sure i'm not dreaming <laughs> oh that better pipe will it <laughs> no 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 let me do it i haven't done anything yet <laughs> through my looking glass mirror. <laughs> oh dear, that means we'll have seven years bad luck. In all circumstances, I don't think it'll notice that. <laughs> if you really want to help, go and make a cup of tea. Don't bring it up. I'll come down for it. Just stay out of the way. I'll call you when I'm finished. I got much faster without you. <laughs> <laughs> and now all, it? And You've done that very neat. You've done that very nice. That is a very professional bit of plastering. Not bad, is it? Yes, very good. Only took you three days. <laughs> I've been doing all the others. Well, this is the last. It's all finished now. It's very good. That is a superb bit of restoration. Here, you ought to be on cathedrals. Don't they need Christ for love you? What are you like on gargoyles? You'd be a good model for one. <laughs> I can see it now. Dozens of little Albert Steptoes all around the guttering, spouting water out of their mouths. <laughs> right, the choir boys to death, it would. <laughs> if your workmanship's as good as mine, we've nothing to worry about. Go on, then. Come on. I'm ready for the switch on. <laughs> there it is. Now, all we've got to do is switch the pump on, light the boiler, and retire immediately. <laughs> now we've done. Comes inside, takes our clothes off, and sits there steamily mute. Give us a message. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Now let's do this properly. I mean, this is an occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, the grand opening and switching on ceremony will be performed by Mr. Albert Spetto, well known local dignitary and chairman of the Keep Britain Tidy Management Committee. <laughs> Mr. Albert Spetto has kindly consented to step in today in place of Prince Philip. <laughs> who unfortunately cannot be with us 
owing to the fact that his helicopter cannot land in the backyard. Mr. Albert, step to I ain't touching it, boy, Mr. Albert. This idiotic twit. Did you say something, Father? Shut up. Ceiling's gone, electricity gone, three into the water in my bedroom. It's drying out quite nicely. <laughs> Be the last of it. <laughs> I'm up top where I could. That must have been under the floorboards. I wish you were. <laughs> no, well, at any rate, you were right about one thing, being able to stay in here in our bathing costumes. I think I'll go and put mine on. <laughs> There's no need to take any sort of attitude. Yeah, sure. I think I know where I went wrong. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Never, never, don't go Never, never, not another thing. That's funny. Oh, God. I've caused a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> 